glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time on this homecoming Sunday. Bless the Lord for a homecoming. Amen. God has called us together as a body of believers to worship together in the beauty of his holiness. Here you're called to worship, derived from Psalms 24, 2 Samuel 6, and Ephesians 1. The earth is the Lord's. Everything in creation belongs to God. Lift up your eyes. See the mighty works of the Lord. This is the Lord's house. All who hope in the Lord will be called children of God. Lift up your hearts. Receive the gracious gifts of the Lord. This is the hour for worship. This is the hour for singing his praises. Amen. Lift up your voice unto the Lord. Praise the Lord with all your might. I said, praise the Lord with all your might. I said, hallelujah is the highest praise. The Bible says, with all our might, with all that is in us, the scriptures say, I will bless the Lord with all that is in me. What is in you on today? Is there a praise down on the inside of you? Is there thanksgiving down on the inside of you? Is there love for the Lord your God on the inside of you? Is there joy, unspeakable joy on the inside of you on this morning? Let us ponder that worship that call to worship as we go before the Lord in prayer. God of all creation, we offer up our thanks to you this morning. In this season of gratefulness, God, we offer up our praise. For God, you are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the God of all things. You are the God of our hope. You are the God of our peace. You are the God of our provision, and you are the God in whom we worship. And so, God, we come to you today, Lord God, with with our hearts lifted up, God. Even if somebody's head is hanging down low, Lord God, we know, Lord God, that your very presence is a healing balm. And so, Lord God, we glorify you on today. Draw us closer, Lord God, as we acknowledge your presence in this place Speak a word of truth, Lord God, that will invigorate our spirits. Help us to go forth throughout the week, Lord God, in the strength of your word. Help us to keep our minds stayed on you. God, if there be any, any, any hardened hearts, Lord God, break it down with your love. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for your unfailing love, Lord God. Help us to show love to all people. Help us to give when there is a need. Help us to pray, Lord God, like never before. God, for you said that your house is a house of prayer and that we ought to bring our supplications, bring our needs, bring all of our desires to you. But you also instructed us to delight ourselves in you. God, make us bendable. Help us not to be so rigid. Help us, Lord God, to delight ourselves in your word that we might receive all that you have for us. This in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And God, bless the man of God that will bring forth your word. Help him to preach it with power. Help us, Lord God, to hear the word and help it to fall on good soil in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on and bless the Lord with your hands, with the fruit of your lips, and with your hearts.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Ah, nothing else matters. Come on. I don't care who's looking at me. I don't care who's looking at me. Nothing else matters. Does anything matter to you? Only that that's important should matter to you, and that's the Lord thy God, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Nothing else matters. Hallelujah. Give him praise this morning. Give him praise in the house this morning. Give him praise in the house this morning because nothing else matters. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They did that. <laughs> they did that. Y'all got to give it up for the choir. They did that. Come on. Don't hold back on them. They did that. They're not here to entertain. They're ministering to us. Hallelujah. They did that. Give them praise in the house. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good all the time. God is good. We're going to our scripture this morning. We're going to be coming from Genesis 15. Six verse through the 17th. When you have it, say amen. Glory to God. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Say righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. Say inherit. inherit. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? 
how will I know? And he said unto him, take me a heifer of three years old and a she-goat of three years old and a ram of three years old and a turtle dove and a pigeon. And he looked, took unto him all these and divided them in the midst and laid each piece one against the other. But the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. And lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, know of a surety, say surety, that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward they shall come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. Good old age. Full of life. <laughs> good. <laughs> no suffering. No sickness. He died in peace because he did right. Amen. But in the fourth generation, thou shalt come hither again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And it came to pass, last part, that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that did pass between those pieces. Amen. Amen. God's word is already blessed. Amen. Amen. God's word is already here for the healing. Amen. Amen. Jesus is passing by. He's passing through. Don't miss him this morning. God is on his way. Amen. Amen. Come on. Nothing else matters this morning in this house. Amen. Nothing else matters. Jesus is passing by. I'm telling you, you better not miss him. You, you better not miss this gravy train this morning. Come on, choir. Father God, we bless you this morning. We tell you thank you for everything that you're doing, everything that you're about to do, oh, Father God. Father, you are welcome in this place by way of the Holy Spirit. Come in and rest upon us today, oh, God. God, do what you want to do and say what you want to say. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let your will be done, Father. Let your anointing fall, oh, glory to God. Their hearts be changed. Minds be converted. Souls be saved. The captives set free. And those that are sick, God, shall be healed. And those that are bound up will be loosed in the mind the name of Jesus. Lord God, we bless your name this morning. God, we praise your name today, oh God. Hallelujah. God, you're worthy of all the praise, God. God, you're worthy of all the glory, God. God, you're worthy this morning, God. Hallelujah. God, we say thank you for being an almighty God. Oh God, for being a just God, a rewarder, oh God, of those that diligently seek you this morning. God, have your way, God. And in this house, oh God, have your way, God. In our house, oh God, these bodies of clay, oh God. God, move within us today. Lord God, that your will shall be done. And we shall be so careful, Lord, to give you all praise, glory, and honor. And God, while we still have your attention today, God, touch the man of God today. God, we ask that you use him for your glory. God, use him mightily today, God. And God, that rhema word, God, that you've given him for us, help him, God, to preach it. God, with power, with authority, with an anointing, God, that God, that we will have no other choice but to receive what thus saith the Lord. God, we bless your name for these blessings and all other blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. And let everybody but a dead body. Everybody that has breath in their bodies, say amen, 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 and amen again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. God, we bless you this morning. Hallelujah. God, you're worthy. Hallelujah. God, we shall buck you. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. God, you're so good. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, God, you're worthy today. Hallelujah. God, we bless you.
Somebody say, Lord, do it. Come on, Lord, do it. I don't know what you're waiting on this morning. All I know is he will do it. Won't he do it? If he doesn't do it, it doesn't need to be done. So, God, we thank you even for the things that you blocked, even the things you rejected that you didn't let us have. I don't understand it, but, God, I know if it wasn't done, that if you don't ordain it, it can't be done. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Do it for me, God. to yourself. Come on, encourage yourself. It's nobody but you and God right now. Come on, speak to your father. Will you speak to your father in here? already done it. Come on. Give God a victorious praise in his house. Come on. He's already done it, beloved. And if you're still waiting, the proof that it's done is in your praise. Thank you, God. extend a warm welcome to each of you all. If you're visiting with us this morning, whether it's for the first time or from another part of the body of Christ, will you allow us to acknowledge you by extending your hand in the air or standing if you see fit? Let us love on all the people who have come together. Come on, we see you, brother. Come on, Creek. Let's act like family in here. You belong here this morning. Welcome home, my friend. Welcome home. So glad that you're in the house, in the house this morning. This morning, it is also our custom, since this is the first Sunday of November, to sing happy birthday 
to all of my November babies. If you're a November baby, come on, stand, put your hand up, let us see you. I see you, come on. Y'all better get excited. I see you. Amen. Come on, let's give a hand clap for all of our November babies. Why, can y'all help us out by singing happy birthday to them? Blessings flow. We thank God for each of you all. We're preparing for our announcements this morning. So I'm going to ask that you guard your hearts, your minds, and your calendars as we receive the announcements. Good morning, Basil Creek Church family and friends, and welcome to our service. We're so glad you decided to join us today. November is Men's Health Awareness Month, with the 12th being mental health and the 19th being prostate health. Children's Church will be held on November the 12th and December the 17th. All ministries, Please submit your 2024 officers to Sister Faye Garrett by November the 15th. Sunday school is held in the fellowship hall from 8.30 to 9.15 every Sunday morning. Reverend Patterson's office hours are Tuesdays 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., Fridays 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., and Saturdays by appointment. Bible study is held on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. via Facebook Live and our conference line. Bible study is held in person on the first Wednesday of the month with a focus on grief support. Our main telephone conference number is 605-562-8401 and the access code is 220-6554. Please join us on our conference line for prayer on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays at 7 p.m. The Outreach Ministry is asking each member to bring a food donation on the first Sunday of the month. Our food market is held every first Saturday of the month in the Aussie Stinson's Fellowship Hall located on the lower level. Your giving and prayers are needed and most appreciated. Giving can be done through the collection plate at the back of the church, U.S. mail via P.O. Box 1295 Fuquay Barina, North Carolina 27526, on our website at basilcreeknbc.org, and you can drop it off on Sundays between 1030 and 11. Blessings. Stay strong. Stay focused and trust God. Amen. We thank God for those announcements. And we pray that you govern your schedules accordingly. We're about to bless our offering and our gifts given to this house. But first, I want to make a special acknowledgement. One of the matriarchs of our ministry is in the house, Reverend Davis' wife. And I want to acknowledge you this morning. Will you, will you help me acknowledge and love on her this morning? Come on, we can do better than that. Come on, can we, those of you all who can stand, can we pray homage where homage is due? Bless you. Come on. We bless you. We thank you. 
for loving this flock and for the many years of service that you gave to us. We could not be here today if it was not for your prayers and your sacrifice. We bless you and we love you. Amen. Amen. Now, if you will, remain standing for the blessing of tithes and offerings and the gifts to this house. Pray with me. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for every giver, for those who gave and those who wanted to give. Now we ask God that you press it down, you shake it together, that it might overflow, Lord, and run into the community, Lord, and to build your kingdom. Help us, God, to take care of your sheep, to feed the hungry, to give drink to the thirsty, clothe the naked, set the captives free, and open the eyes of the blind. This is our prayer, God, and we pray it in the matchless name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.
your help. Where does all your help come from? Jesus is my help. Come on, choir, help us out. Come on, let's help them sing, you all. Come on, that's a little weak. I need y'all to pick that up. Come on, open your voices. That's a little weak. Give it, to, give it to Jesus. Don't give it to me. You better call on his name. One more time. Come on, let's do it incognito. Come on and give God some praise in his house. Ah, y'all don't judge my praise. In the nightclub, they would have formed a circle around me and been like, go Jitter, go Jitter. Go. That, was, that was my name in college. Don't judge me. I know what God has done for me. What has he done for you? You don't know the extent of my praise unless you know where he brought me from. I know I'm not the only one in here who's been delivered, redeemed, reconciled, forgiven, loved even when I was unlovable, Lord Jesus. I know it was only Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for being a present help. That'll preach all by itself. A present help. Ah. Past, present, and future. He's always on time. Come on, if you believe it, put your hands together. I don't want to hold us too long because I believe there's some pig feet boiling downstairs. Yeah? We got pig feet. Pig feet. Come on, verify. Someone verify. We got the trotters. Okay, amen. It won't be a long sermon, all right? You've heard it read. You can have your seat. I got barbecue pig feet on the brain. God, forgive me. Bring me back into this moment in Jesus' name. Y'all heard the scripture read from Genesis, the 15th chapter. I'm just going to reread for you. Verse 17. When the sun had set and darkness had fallen, the smoking fire pot. The blazing torch appeared and passed between the pieces. I want to give our homecoming sermon lesson the title, From Promise to Possession. Can you all help me say that? From Promise to Possession. Can I get three people who are waiting on something to say, From Promise to possession. Two more people, if you're in here on Facebook, from promise to possession. Pray with me. God, we thank you for this great day of homecoming, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you loved us enough, God, to take us from a bush harbor to this beautiful edifice, to all the families that you have kept over the ages, to allow us to come back into one another's presence, God, to praise your name. For it is all about you, God. Now, God, as we prepare our hearts, our minds, our ears for what thus saith the Lord, allow me to decrease that you might increase. 
hide me behind your rugged cross. Deliver on your promise that your word would go forth, but not return void. Now, O oh God, prepare us to be hearers and doers of your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, do what it is that only you can do. And the people of God said amen and amen. Beloved, Genesis 15 may well be one of the most important chapters in the entire Bible. It illustrates God's continued commitment to love, to bless, and to prosper humanity. Abram, soon to be renamed Abraham, gave up his worldly possessions to trust and to follow God. God came to Abram in a vision and said, Abram, I saw what you did, and I am pleased. You could have sought revenge when the rulers of the land had stolen from you, but you realize that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. You shared a tenth of your inheritance with the high priest, Melchizedek, because you understood that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Abraham could have taken credit for all of his victories and successes, but instead he decided to give God all of the credit. And God said, Abram, I saw you and I am pleased. In his retirement years, God told Abram to leave all that you know and to follow me. How many of you all know that trusting and following God's plan will lead you through some dark times, will lead you through the wilderness, will lead to you into the storm? Abram was left a king without a kingdom, a father without a biological child, a resident without a home, but he trusted God. Go wherever I tell you, Abram, because wherever you go, there I will be. Whatever people do for you or do to you will be done as it is done to me. Do whatever I tell you because I know the outcome. I have the plan. Abraham still remained scared, timid, second-guessing himself, vulnerable. But God said in the word, do not be afraid, Abram. For I am your shield and your very great reward. Does that encourage anybody this morning? Do not be afraid, beloved, for I am your shield and your great reward. Abraham prayed, Lord, how will I know that you will bless me? How do I know that you will protect me? How will I know that you will deliver on your promise to make me the father of many nations? God simply said, look up. That's a sermon in itself, ain't it? Somebody's head laying low today, and I just want to encourage you, look up. Look past your circumstances. Look toward the hills from which cometh your help. Somebody say, Pastor, that's another sermon. Get back on topic. Abraham prayed, Lord, how will I know you blessed me? God's response was, Abraham, look up. Look up at the stars and see if you can count them. If you trust me, you will have more children than the stars in the sky. Look all around you. If you obey me, I will give you everything that your eye can see. If you have faith in me, I will lead you. I will protect you. I will provide for you. Too many times, children of Zion, we pray for our pain and struggles to end. But that prayer is seldomly met. Instead, we should pray for the roots of faith, hope, and love to run deep. So when the rains of hard times come and the winds of discouragement and trouble blow, we will not be swept away. Like Abram, we take on responsibility of fulfilling God's promise. When that's not our job. Somebody say, that ain't your job. That's why we're stressed out, passed off. I said passed. Broke, 
busted, rusted, can't be trusted, overwhelmed because we take on the struggle and responsibilities that God did not intend for us. We do good at telling our bosses, our spouses, our parents, even your pastor, that ain't my job. If you ain't laughing, you're the very one I'm talking to. When doubt says, you can't do that. You're too old. Why not say, it wasn't my job in the first place to make it happen. When shame and guilt say, you're not worthy. You have messed up too many times. You have fallen too many times. That's when you can say with faith, yes, I am a sinner, but I am saved by grace. Am I talking to anybody? If anxiety plagues your mind and self-deprecating thoughts are telling you that you don't deserve joy, peace, happiness, and love, you can respond with, it never was my job to redeem myself, my worth. My joy, my peace, and love is in Christ. Therefore, I am because he is. I am the head and not the tail. Can I con confess this morning that I can speak things that be not as though they were? That I can lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. That I can speak to demons and they will flee. That I can forgive when things are unforgivable. I can do all things. And I will have whatever he promised. See, the promise was given to Abram. Three chapters earlier, God gave the promise. So when God gives the promise, God also ensures that his promises come to pass. God gives the promise, so God ensures his promise with your belief. Did you hear what I said, beloved? God gives the promise, but he ensures it with your belief. A promise is given is a promise believed. A promise believed is a promise guaranteed. What am I saying to you this morning? Believe and stand firm on the word of God. Some of y'all still didn't catch it. Can I make it live? When Abram needed assurance, God told Abram, Bring me a heifer, bring me a goat, and bring me a ram, each of them three years old, and a dove, and a young pigeon. And he told Abram to cut the heifer, goat, and ram into two. Let me tell you something. In the ancient Near East, there was a ritual that they would go into covenant with where they would cut the animals in half, and the two parties would walk between them, signifying the punishment due each of them if one of them broke the covenant. Did you catch that? I said they would cut the animals to, uh, apart, and they would walk between them together, signifying to all that were watching that if one of us breaks this covenant, what happened to these animals, so shall it happen to us. But thanks be to God. The Bible says that while he was sleeping, he was not paying attention. It said a dreadful darkness had fallen upon him. If I can take some exegetical creative license, I want to believe that he was falling in sleep because he was depressed. How am I going to make this work, God? You call me to do something impossible. Don't you know that I'm all old and dried up? My wife is old and dried up. We cannot biologically or naturally do what you promised. How, Lord, am I going to bring it to pass, Lord? Why, Lord, did you choose me, God? Can't you, Lord, choose somebody else? I believe that he was weighted down and the best thing he could do is take a nap anybody ever been so depressed so overwhelmed the only thing you could do is take a nap Lord Jesus just for 30 minutes God let it go away God just for a few hours Lord let me forget all the troubles God just let me rest in perfect peace God I just want relief the text says while he was sleeping he wasn't paying attention that the fire pot of God descended and passed between the two divided animals alone. 
you know what that means. That means God said, if I promised it, then I am responsible to bring it to pass. That's going to jump on somebody's spirit right there. God says, it ain't up to you, baby. The battle was never yours. All I need you to do is trust in me, delight in me, commit your life to me, and rest. Somebody ought to shout, rest. Say it loud and proud. I said R E S T. Rest. How many of y'all are ready to stop worrying this morning? How many of y'all are ready to stop being the end and ready to be the front? God says it's the season of resting in my word and trusting me for everything I said, every promise I made, every blessing I have for you. This is the season to rest with blessed assurance knowing that I'm going to come through. Stop worrying and rest. Stop trying to figure it out and rest. Stop stressing and rest. Stop complaining and rest. Stop hiding and rest. Stop retreating and rest. Oh, that problem that you had, you just couldn't seem to solve. You prayed and you prayed, but you just got deeper involved. It said, I turned it over to Jesus. I said, I turned it over to Jesus, and I'm not going to worry about it. Can I say that again, Miss Dot? I turned it over to the Lord, and he worked it out. Somebody ought to shout, oh, yeah. You ought to give it to God. Whatever you're hanging on this morning, whatever brought you in this house this morning, whatever trial and tribulation you're going through, somebody say, rest and let it go. Rest and turn it over to Jesus. If you believe it, if you received it and you declared it, then I'm saying rest with blessed assurance, knowing that the blood that ran red on Calvary's mount, surely, surely every promise, surely every blessing, surely every possession, while you're waiting, you ought to give him some praise because your praise is the evidence that it will come I'm done I'm done but we all want something from the Lord but God wants us to want him did that drop in your shine out now I said we all want something from the Lord but all God wants from us is for us to want him the Bible said the word of the Lord came to Abram and he told brother Abram, I am both your shield and your reward. Did you hear what I said? He said, I'm both of these things simultaneously all at the same time, your shield and your reward. That's because God is the journey and the destination. God is the source and object of our worship. God is the rewarder and the reward. God says, I gave you my son, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn us, but that through him we might be saved. God said, I already gave you my spirit. I will not leave you comfortless. You shall receive power. Someone ought to shout power after my Holy Ghost has come upon you. I promise you my presence. I am Emmanuel. I will never leave nor forsake you. Can I quote my favorite scripture? Joshua 1 and 9 says, haven't I commanded be strong, beloved, and be courageous. Look at your neighbor and say, don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Stop being a scary cat. Do not become discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. You mean to tell me, God, when I was creeping and tipping and dipping, he was right there with me. When I was sipping and slipping, he was right there with me. He'll be there with you in the courthouse. He'll be there with you in the operating room. He'll stand with you when you don't stand for yourself. He'll protect you when you can't protect yourself. He'll provide for you when there's no food on the table. Somebody ought to shout, yeah! I'm done. Therefore, wherever you go, the Lord is with you. Wherever, whenever, 
however you find yourself. You are blessed and highly favored. You are the head and not the tail. You are more than a conqueror. Greater is he that is within you than he that is within the world. When you are sick, he'll make you well. When you're a sinner, all you have to do is confess because he is our all in all. He's done it all. He deserves it all. And if he's done anything for you, you ought to shout, thank you, God. Jesus, Jesus, he's our possession. What greater reward? And you thought you wanted houses and land, but our God has a mansion in the sky. And it says it has many rooms. How can God be here with us in this wretched life? And be in eternity preparing the house for us. Did you know that we're not going to spend our entire existence on this planet? There's another life coming, beloved. And God says, I've already laid it out. Come on in where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. Come on in. You're welcome. I've already paid the price. You got VIP sitting. Come on up to the front. Stop sitting in the back. I've laid it out. I've spread it out. It's all yours for the taking. All I need you to do is believe. Jesus is our possession. We are in him. And he is in us. Everything, beloved. Anything that we ask for or can imagine, everything we need, everything you could ever want is found in Christ and Christ alone. I'm going to leave you with this. Our prayer should be, Lord, give me you. Is there anyone who can touch and agree with me on that? Say, Lord, give me you. Everything else can wait. Just give me you, oh God. I can wait on the mansions. I can wait on the Bugattis and Benzes and Beamers. I can wait on all the commas in my bank account. But I can't live. Because in you, I live, I move, and I have my being. God, just give me you. It's not too late, beloved, to ask God, just give me you. You can be like the Syrophoenician woman who said, God, I understand that salvation is of the Jews. But if I have to be a dog, give me a crumb. You can be like the woman at the well who was looking for pleasure and acceptance in all the wrong places. And Christ said, if you knew who you were talking to, you'd never want another thing. The doors of the church are open, beloved this great homecoming day. We started out with God. But 
through sin, we were separated. Today can be your homecoming. Would you come back into the loving embrace of your gracious Father? For a God that knows all will take your sin and cast it into the sea of forgetfulness. Today could be your day where all your mistakes he'll erase. Mm. All your failures he'll wipe clean. All your shortcomings he'll bring you up to speed. Today can be your day. Is there one who wants to give their life to the Lord and come home today? Maybe you've been on the front line. This is your time to walk in the front door. If you want rededication, this is your opportunity. Won't you come and be part of the family of God? For he's already prepared a place for you. And you belong here. If you're looking to be baptized, to be dipped in the cooling waters of salvation, to join symbolically in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is your time. Is there one? My final plea is for those who have gotten tired of roaming and you're ready to make this your home. We extend the welcome. If you want to make Basil Creek your church home, where you can grow in Christian love and discipleship, then you belong here. Is there one? Won't you come? We thank God for each of you all. Before we take communion and give our blessing of the food and the benediction, we want to lift up all the angels of our home here at the creek. Will you help me lift up these brothers and sisters? Sister Dorothy Davis, we lift you up. Sister Texana Washington, Sister Mary Davis, Sister Lola Booker, we lift you up. Sister Yolanda Utley, Sister Irene Baldwin, Sister Ruby Watson, Sister Dorothy Bell, Sister Lucille Moore, Sister Janet Curtis, Sister Mary Hood Saunders, Sister Andrea K. Moore, Sister Christine Stewart, Sister Tracy Taylor, Sister Sandra Gray, Sister Jean Hedgepath, Sister Marie Clark, Sister Deborah Wright, we lift you up, Sister Kim Brightman, Brother Jess Lewis, Brother Ronald Wright, we lift you up, Brother David Perkins, we lift you up, Sister Phyllis McClaymore, Sister Dorothy McKinney, Deaconess Margaret Green, Deacon Catherine Jeffries, Brother Tommy McLean, Brother Thomas Speaks, Brother Alvis Walker, Brother Tony McDowell, Brother Robert Jones, Deacon Oscar Steele, Deacon Jimmy Evans, Deacon Carl Tony Wilson, Brother William Hodge, Brother Larry Norris, Brother Justin Marley Hodge, Brother James Turk Sr., Brother Lamont Pardon, Brother Dennis Slade, we lift you up, Deacon Sam Woods Sr., Deacon Frank Reynolds, Brother Thomas Jackson, Sister Lydia Hurin, and Brother Bonnie Perkins. We lift you up. And anyone's name who was not called, know that the Lord knows your name, he knows your need, and we lift you up. It's communion time.
before we partake in the Lord's Supper. We want to bless this cup and this bread. Will you pray with me? Loving and gracious God, we thank you for these symbols of your love and sacrifice, for your obedience. Thank you, God, for seeing fit in your infinite wisdom to give us a way to acknowledge your sacrifice, to obey your word, and to live into your redemption. Now we bless this bread and we bless this cup. And we pray right now, God, that if anyone is not worthy of this bread and this cup, that you wash away their sins, that you forgive us, that we will not be guilty of the body and the blood, the sacrifice of your suffering servant, your only begotten son, Jesus. And the people of God said amen and amen. The Bible records that on the day that our Lord and Savior was to die on the cross, he saw fit to spend one more meal with his disciples and friends. At the table, he took a piece of unleavened bread he blessed it, and then he broke it, and then he gave it, and he said, take this bread, what represents my body that will be broken and given to you, and as often as you eat it, don't you forget what I'm about to do for you, and they all ate together. And in the same manner that he took the bread, he took the chalice. And he said, this cup represents the new covenant. My blood that is shed. For this will be the last time in all of eternity that a blood sacrifice is required for salvation. He blessed the cup. And he gave it to them. He said, as often as you drink this, remember my pain. Remember my suffering. Don't ever forget how much I love you. Let us drink together. And the Gospels record that they went down into the Mount of Olives singing hymns. Come on and help us sing. As we continue to sing softly, let us receive a blessing for our homecoming meal. God, we thank you for the food that's been provided. To celebrate this, our gathering, we thank you for this church. We thank you for the people of this church. And God, we thank you for all the travelers that came here to celebrate with us. Now, God, bless the food make it safe and nourishing to our bodies and bless every hand that helped prepare it. God, we ask in your infinite wisdom that you would accept our fellowship as an act of worship.
receive this benediction. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep you. You're going out and you're coming in from this time forth and forevermore. And the people of God said amen, amen, and amen. Let everybody pray. Give me you. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you.